All right, so today we want to take a look at the steps used in problem solving. And it's something we normally discuss whenever we do our program exercise, right? So this is more geared towards the third form class that I teach. Um, so we started out talking about problem solving and programming and how we can use computer programs to solve um, various problems or various real world problems as it relates to development of software. Um, one of the first step, however, that we discussed was the creation of an outline or sort of an outline um, to solving whichever problem you have. And to do that, we use something called an IPO chart. Now, what an IPO chart is, is that it is a chart that outlines your input, as you can, uh, as you may have thought, the I stands for input, process, and output. And so we look for keywords within our statements that can be used to identify what our inputs are, keywords that can be used to identify what our processes are, and keywords that can be used to identify what our outputs are. And so for our inputs, um, our keywords are get, read, or input. For our output, the keywords that we look for are um, output, print, display. And then for our processes, um, we might be doing some, some sort of calculation or some sort of uh, comparison. Um, so those are the words we look for within our problem statement. We kind of outlined the statement uh, or, or try to start the plan off by uh, creating an IPO chart. Later on, we move into um, algorithm development and then we move into actual programming into the different languages. So let's jump into it and let me show you how to create an IPO chart. Now, our problem statement reads, it says, I would like I would like a program that could get the length and width of a rectangular room and then it should be able to calculate and print the area of the room. So from my problem statement, I can identify my keywords, um, one of which is um, get. So I, I know that my input will be to get the length and the width of the room and my output, I can say, I, I can see the word print here as we spoke about earlier and that will be able to output area of the room and process. Here the word calculate pops up and so we're calculating again area of the room. So I'm doing this in Microsoft Word, maybe as a reviewer for those of you who use Office, just to show you some of the different features of Microsoft Word as well. And keep in mind that um, normally we do this on paper, right? But we can also do it in one of the um, productivity tools such as Microsoft Word. So let's insert in a table. We'll do a table of three, three columns and two rows. So like I mentioned, our first column has will take our input. Our second column will put in the processes. And our third column will put in our output. So again, from reading the statement, you can tell what the inputs will be. And I normally like to put the word get or read or input in front of those words. Um, we can leave it um, by only stating the variable, and we know what a variable is, right? So a variable essentially is a letter or a word that can be used to hold a value. It takes the place of a value. So input says, I would like a program that can get, and it will be getting, and this is what you look for in the statement, it will be getting the length, and it will be getting the width. So here we're saying it will get length, and it will also get the width of the room, right? What I like to do is from input, you jump over to the output because we know what, the, what we need and we also know what we will produce. And then we start working on those processes. So IPO, again, is not really the algorithm itself. It is the first step of creating the algorithm. And so we're kind of creating a form a farm work, if I can use that word, or a template of what our problem solving steps will be. Output, I, I can identify the word print, which will be my output. Like I mentioned, we can have output, we can use display, or we can use out. Um, so it can print area of the room, and I'll shorten that, right? So output will say it will print out to the screen the area or area of the room. 
Now, in your processes, because this is our output, in your processes, um, what you want is to first of all highlight or place in what your inputs will be. And I also like to tell um, my students to put in what the output will be. And then we work on what we need to have done in the, somewhere in the middle here, right? So from the statement, if you look at the statement, what do you think we need to do in order to um, find area of the room? So again, we look for our keywords. And the keywords we mentioned for the process was either a comparison or a calculate. In this case, the word calculate pops up. And so we calculate area of the room or we calculate area. So here in the middle, we can put that into our IPO chart that we're calculating area. And I'll just take away that space. All right, let me put the space. We, we don't really need it, so just, to, just to clarify. So our process gets length or whatever we have in the input. It gets the width of the rectangular figure, the rectangular room. Our output, it prints area. And somewhere in the middle, we're able to quickly then calculate area. So here we're not worried about the formula being used for area at this time. Um, that is what we touch in an algorithm. We're more, uh, we are more, we more want to know what the procedure will be. And so our procedure is to get the length of the room, get the width of the room, calculate the area, and then print out that answer to the screen. Or if you're using a calculator, then you want to um, also print that answer to the screen, right? So that's pretty much it. So a IPO chart, again, will kind of give you the framework that you're using to build algorithm, right? And we're able to get the width, get the length as an input. Output, again, we look for keywords in the statement, that is to print the area. And for processes, we look for keywords, and our keywords here is to calculate, and so we're able to calculate the area of the room. And that's your complete IPO chart, right? Um, so let me give you a problem that you can try at home and see if you can come up with your IPO chart. And the next step after this, of course, is to create your algorithm. So, Ms. Kualam. And take a look at this problem and see if you can do this on your own. It is create the IPO chart, right? So you're doing something similar to what we did um, that can be used to read the price of an item. So if you're going to the store, you're getting the price of the item and the amount being purchased. Calculate and print the total cost to be paid. So you want the price of the item. Let's say you're buying a shoe. Um, let's say the price of the shoe is $10. And you want the amount you purchase. If you purchase two or three shoes, um, then you want to know how much money you'll actually pay. So first step, of course, is understanding what the problem is saying. And then now you get to construct your IPO chart. So go ahead and construct your IPO chart. See if you can come up with some possible solution. And in the next video, we'll see if we can look at algorithm. All right. All right. So that should give you an idea of what IPO chart is. Um, and the development into problem solving and so we look at the first of all you understand your problem right and from there you're able to quickly create a template using the IPO chart and after the IPO chart you get to create algorithm and from algorithm you can transfer that into whatever programming language you want for the creation of some program or some software I hope you gave the problem a try and of course feel free to post your solution somewhere and share it maybe maybe through a google drive or something um if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button do leave a comment below um, i'm hoping that we can look at the next part of this lesson which deals with the creation algorithm or if there's some clarification needed please let me know and i'll see if i can um, do some more on ipo chart ipo chart normally is the shortest piece of the problem solving phase Meantime guys, have a nice day, be safe, and go geek yourself.